Hey guys, what's going on? Troy at Mountain Man Treasure here, and today, a look at the wide world of, well, Mountain Man Treasure. Mountain Man. Mountain Man. Treasures. Welcome into the channel, guys. My name is Troy. I'm a reseller in Montana. I go to garage sales and estate sales. I go to thrift stores. I buy stuff, and then I sell it again online, mostly on eBay. And there are some people out there that have a niche. There are shoe sellers. There are trading card sellers, comic book sellers, you know, people that only deal in Pyrex, whatever it is, there are people that niche down. And for some people, that could be a very good thing. It could be a very profitable thing. You learn everything there is to learn about one particular category. You can kill it if you're in an area where you can consistently source that particular thing and source it at a good price. For me, I'm not in one of those areas. I'm not going to consistently find one thing or another to the point where I can niche down and that's all that's in my store. Also, it would just be boring to me. Then I turn into a light bulb salesman. I, I, I don't want to sell only light bulbs. You know, That's just not my mentality. It, maybe it's my ADD. I don't know what it is, but I can't do one particular thing over and over and over and over in terms of selling. I just get bored with it. So I sell a little bit of everything. It fits where I'm at. It fits my style. It fits my mental state. I, it doesn't work for everybody to niche down. And so I thought today was a great example when we look at what I sold over the last 24 hours of you can sell a lot of different things and be profitable on eBay. Let's take a look at what I sold. Nice pile heading out today. We'll see how quickly I can move through this for you. But I think this shows a good mix of the kind of things that I sell and the kind of price points you can get for those various things. Here we've got Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man Annual. This is a pretty highly sought after comic, not super high dollar, but if you find it, it's in good condition, it is going to sell. This one, $19.49 plus shipping. Pretty good. How about another book? Not a comic book. Kind of. I mean, it's a guy that wrote comics, actually. We've talked about him on the channel before. Rick O'Shea, Hip Shot and Me. This is a memoir by Stan Lined. This is actually... Where is it? Let me find it. It's actually signed. There you go. And that makes it worth a little bit more. Definitely a fan base for this stuff. And I've been finding them at estate sales lately and you can get pretty good money on them it takes a little while for them to move but when they do like this one 45 dollars 49 cents plus shipping i'll wait around for that that's not bad this one is a low dollar seller but a very easy thing to list if you're looking for something that you can get a whole bunch of listings up quickly dvds one of those things escape from new york I love the Escape Froms. Not, like I said, a high dollar, but $4.99 plus shipping. We've got a vinyl back here. We've got Neil Merriweather, John Richardson, and Boars. I don't know this one, but it sells pretty well. This one's not in fantastic shape, but still $9.98 plus shipping. Got a Dickies hat. Look at that. I got to clean some random dust and stuff off of there but uh this one pretty nice we got fourteen dollars 82 cents plus shipping for that guy it's still new with the tag on the back which is pretty cool over here we've got a couple these actually sold to different people overnight i woke up and it, initially i was a little concerned i thought maybe somehow i had double sold something that there was a glitch forgetting that i had a different one this one or it's this one this one i had just listed uh, this is Football 1. This I just found at a garage sale here recently. I think you might see this on Saturday. I think we'll we'll, we'll try and put it out this weekend. Uh, this is one where I found all the red lines. And this is the original. There was a reproduction that came out, but you can see this one is 1977 Hong Kong. Despite there being some discoloration and stuff on the back, this is the original. And so this will sell for a little bit more than the reproduction. This one sold for $19.49 plus shipping. This is the one that they read it. And this is lighter weight, actually, than this one. This one came out in, I think, the early 2000s. It's a reproduction of that older game. 
And this one does sell as well. This one, $15.59 plus shipping. I just found today, actually, Mattel Electronics Football 2. That one sells right about the same price point as this one. It's green. So keep an eye out for these. These do have uh, some nostalgia. People like picking these things up. This sold day of listing. Actually, this had two of them. So it was a quantity listing. I do still have one other. Not real high dollar. I actually thought this was going to be worth a little bit more. It's Sherpa lined. It's black Sherpa lined inside. This is a motorcycle helmet bag. And because it's Harley branded, I, I did think it was going to be worth a little bit more. But still, obviously, it, it sold relatively quickly. At least one of them did. $25 plus shipping for this guy. How about another handheld you saw we sold a Game Boy here recently. Well, now we've sold the other one. We picked this up at that garage sale for a dollar. And this one actually comes with a game. Look at that. We got Super Mario Brothers Deluxe that I just included with this one. Look at that. And it, it makes sense to include with this because the cartridge, actually the label wore off. And so there's no label on it. It would have been tough to sell it by itself. So why not pair it with the Game Boy and make that a little bit more appealing? You know, and I admit, I tested this for a while the other day to make sure that the game and the system worked. And this thing sold for $68.24 plus shipping. Not bad for a $1 garage sale buy. Let's turn that off so they have some juice when they get it. I'm just going to ship it with the batteries in there. Why not? I usually don't, incidentally, on stuff that's battery operated. Usually I don't ship it with the battery in it just because of extra weight, essentially. But with that one, it actually, when I bought it, came with the battery. So I figure, you know what? I'll sell it with the battery. Here, we got a little Scotty dog. This is made by Goebel. See the little B there? These are the same folks that made all of the Hummels actually. And this guy is pretty cool. I think I picked him up for a dollar at a garage sale this summer. So he took maybe a couple months to sell, but not all that bad. He just sat up on my breakables shelf and I accepted an offer yesterday of $27 plus shipping. Pretty good. I do pick up breakables now and again. I mentioned the red lines. We've sold a couple more. See, there it is. When I say red line, that one shows up really well. You can see the red line on the tires. And sometimes it wears off and it looks silver once it's rubbed off. So look and see if there's like a white silver line around there. Be careful because just like the Levi's Big E, there's like a new version of it. They're like, hey, this is popular. Let's re-release it. You don't want the new red lines. You want the old red lines. And you can tell looking on the bottom. Well, that one. Well, you can see it there. Hong Kong. And so put that in there because people are going to look for where it was made. This one's 1970 Hong Kong. And this is funny money. It actually opens up there. And this one, $26.20 plus shipping. We sold one other. And look at this. Because it's a red line, guys. Again, see, there's that one wore off a little bit. But you can see it there. You can see it on the other side. This one, look at how rough a shape this is in. I think maybe at some point somebody repainted this. You can see they probably painted it red or something. This thing is rough. I still sold it for $15 plus shipping because it's a red line and people will restore these. So keep an eye out for those Hot Wheels red lines. Let's do these guys back here. Look at this. Troll dolls. It's getting to be about that time. Little pilgrims getting ready for Thanksgiving. And these actually going out to Dina, a viewer of the channel. Dina picking these up for $8.78 plus shipping. And Dina got herself a couple of ducks as well. We're going to get to that here in a minute. So Dina, thank you so much for those. We'll ship those along with your ducks, actually. And then this one is a nice little find. The Casio VL... There it is, VL1 the VL tone. It's just a little keyboard. And I'm not exactly sure why this particular one, maybe somebody out there knows, but this particular little keyboard sells very well, even if you find it without the box. But I had the box. There's the uh, 
the little case that this goes in, it's a little snap case, that's in there, and the instructions. Pick this up at an estate sale for a few bucks. And it sold in about two weeks. It sold really quickly for an offer that I sent out this morning. I had a watcher on it, thought, let's send out an offer and see what happens. They accepted it. $52 plus shipping for this. Not bad. And then Dina, as I mentioned, but not only the Pilgrim Trolls, she got some ducks as well. You got a Dracula duck. Look at that. Spilled some of his dinner. I've got one other in the store now. Not exactly like that, but very, very similar. Different color schemes. Added some more Halloween ducks in there. Gotta get some Thanksgiving ducks, I think. And then we got the uh, the purple witch duck. So, Dina, thank you so much. And then Sandy continuing to build the duck fleet over there. We've got the cow duck. Curious duck or a uh, crick in his neck. I, I, I'm not sure. He's a little bit gorpy there, but I mean, he, he's cool, right? We got the cow duck. We got the pink dog duck. Look at that. He will hypnotize you if you just pause it and stare at this for long enough. You will list your items. You will organize your inventory. Get your ducks in a row. All right. Then we got the, uh, we got another dog duck, Dalmatian duck. You guys get hypnotized there? And then another Halloween sitting in the, the jack-o'-lantern. So those, whoop, come on, buddy. Those heading out to Sandy. Thank you, my friend. So, you know, toys, electronics, comic books, yeah, a Harley Davidson helmet bag. I don't know what the accessories, I don't know where that falls. I, I sell a lot of different stuff. Uh, you know, if I had to pick one thing, I do trend towards vintage because I think eBay is the perfect place for that. But past that, past that really broad category of vintage fill in the blank, I'll, I'll sell just about anything. And it doesn't have to be vintage, you know, it, for me to sell it. I, I'll pick up something new, new in package. Easy, easy seller, easy thing to list. I'll do that as well. So uh, let me know, I guess, in the uh, in the comments. Have you niched down? And if so, why? And, and how does that work for you? Maybe explain to other sellers who maybe are thinking about it, why that's something that works for you. What are the benefits? What are maybe the drawbacks? That sort of thing. I'd be curious to see how many are niched down and how many sell, like me, whatever they happen to come across. So guys, I appreciate it. If you've not hit the subscribe button. We're working our way towards 14,000. Actually, we gained a fair number of subs here in the last couple of days. We're less than 100 people away from 14,000 subs. It'd be really cool to get that here in the next little bit and move on to the next benchmark, right? Then we're working towards 15, right? So that would be pretty cool. So if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up. That helps me a ton as we work to grow this thing. And commenting, that helps with the YouTube algorithm as well. So that's what I have for an ask for you guys. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.